One day, Lewin went on down to a shrine of the lady to pray, but she spoke to him and said, Lewin, I'm sick of seeing all these poor horses dying. If you want to conquer the world, you must do it with only peasants. Putain de merde. So after cursing at the lady, Luen went off in a bit of a huff, but to conquer the world with only peasants. So the first order of business with this campaign, get rid of all those knights as the lady demands. So we'll be using pretty much only peasant infantry. And hell, even Luen himself will not use a horse. We're going to take him off his horse because the lady said no. Now I am going to use my damsel in my army from time to time, even though I guess she's not technically a peasant, but mostly I'm going to use her as an agent. But here I had to recruit a few units to be able to take on the vampire army, but now it's retreated into its settlement, so I can't take it on anyway. So I need to recruit even more boys. On the next turn though, that army for some reason leaves Languil and it will be mine. I then move into Musulon land to try and scout the area, sizing them up for peasant invasion. On the next turn though, naturally old Belacor's coming after us with the Vanna Heimlings as well, so they're going to be a problem as always. And just to make sure things are going from bad to worse, Musalon are getting up a big army and some nearby greenskins have got a full stack outside Kuron. So that's great, but I'm comfortable the garrison should be able to defend from those greenskins. And I'm going to attempt to ambush the Musalon army and maybe just maybe we can get out of this jam. But obviously my ambush fails and I have to potentially fight this battle. I think maybe I could win it. It's only a lot of zombies, but I think we probably get scared away a lot. So I figure I'll just take an extra turn to let the garrison replenish. I go and sit in the settlement, but the greenskins decide they don't want Corone. There's also a Shadow Legion army coming, so that's good as well. I then end up besieged by the full greenskin stack and the Musalon stack because they're best of friends and obviously love working together, so they've decided to come after me. Makes perfect sense. With this, I decide that, well, I'm done with this campaign. Peasant campaign, Luen, can't be done. There we go. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Let's try it again. I'm going to block this army first of all to try to stop them getting away. Let's do this. Come on. Positive mental attitude. Woo! Oh, for f Fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Didn't need her anyway. We've recruited a few units. This time, though, Musalon has decided to stay in La Anguilla instead of running off. I decided to try my chances with auto resolve anyway, but uh, there's just way too much. So I fall back to recruit more boys, but then it looks like they've got two armies on the borders ready to come at me. And come at me they do. With both their stacks, I've got the help of the garrison for me, though, which is going to be using some horses, but oh well. I decide to fight this, though, to try and get that victory, and uh, it's no good. The peasants just can't hold up against all that fear of the zombies, not yet anyway. So there we go, fail number two. Third time's the charm though, right? Let's do it. This time I took a bit of a different approach, ignoring Musilon and instead going after those greenskins and taking them out first. So then I wouldn't have to worry about that side. I recruited as much of an army as I could before they would recruit a massive stack as well. They did get half a stack and came at me, but luckily we were able to get a Pyrrhic victory auto resolve which I took and then just tried to replenish, merge and recruit a few more units to keep my attack going. I then pressed the attack on the greenskins with a little help from an extra lord I recruited, got the damsel in there as well because my army's a little bit beaten up and it's just enough to get that Pyrrhic victory. From here I decide to raise the settlement because out of habit I generally don't like having a province that I can't complete so I won't bother just having the one settlement by itself. I'll just let Marienburg or whoever else take it. As long as the threat isn't coming after me, that's enough for me. A few turns on and I've regrouped and I'm ready to push on Languil and take that and get this first full province. And you might notice Leoness was in my lands there, it's because they've actually taken out Musalon for the most part, apart from their one last settlement. So that's done me a favour and everything seems to be coming together. But of course things wouldn't be complete without Belend Kor declaring war on me, as he has to do for some reason in this campaign. But I decide to try and take the fight to them early, to get over to Albion and try to take those two out Shadow Legion and Vanaheimlings, so then I can focus on taking territory more in my region. The Red Duke comes along and decides he wants peace, which I'm going to take just so I don't have to worry about Musalon for a while. And the first attack comes in from the north, a big Vanaheimling's army. I'm going to try and ambush them when they come ashore, and I'm going to get it. I could auto-resolve for an easy close victory, but I decide to fight it for the fun of it. I try to set it up so that I can attack them on one side and then hopefully blast them in the back with all my missiles. And thankfully they played into it and I was able to get plenty of missiles in the back and then eventually flank them to try and break their leadership, which ended up giving me a close victory anyway. And just as soon as I chase that army down to finish it off, a Shadow Legion army is now here. So I feel like this is going to be an endless cycle, so I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to go for Albion and see what happens and try to fend them off in my home territory as much as possible. And of course, as I'm about to leave, well, there's now two Shadow Legion armies on my coast, so that's great. Brilliant. Things are looking good. Still, 
gonna push on to Albion, gonna try and take these two factions out, hopefully before they do too much damage to me. The Shadow Legion are about to come ashore. I do think about trying to defend Languil with a little army, but I decide to fall back to Corona and get a bigger army and defend there. Bellacor does of course attack and I tried to fight the battle to do as much damage to the enemy army as possible. Specifically here trying to focus down Bellacor to get some damage on him. And I've been blasting away at some of the lighter armoured units like the Demonettes and the Plague Bearers. And while I didn't manage to get a ton done, I did get Bellacor down to about half health and took out their Hell Cannon so that's something. On the next turn I begin my assault on Albion, taking the first Vanaheimling settlement, but I'm now running into the big peasant problem that I have too many peasants and thus my replenishment is reduced by 90%, so I basically have no replenishment. Bellacor is now besieging Coron as well, so I need to defend this. I can't sit here, he's just going to wear me down, so I've got to fight it in the open field. I am going to have to defy the lady a little bit as we do have some cavalry units, but desperate times call for desperate measures and all that. Now we do have a lot of missiles and Bellacor is heading in first which allows us to kind of get a bit of a head start on trying to take him out. He does the classic AI thing of just diving into the middle of my army trying to get after my lord. I blast him down with missiles, put the Grail Knights on him, the Anti-Large on him. He goes down pretty quick pretty early in the fight and then it's just a case of blasting at all the lightly armoured missiles that this army has and using the cavalry, the new Bretonian cavalry that now just runs through everything like it's not even there. And what do you know, praise Zaledi, we're able to win this and fend them off with a pretty healthy army left over to finish them off. Now at this point you might think, hey this campaign looks like it might be going alright, he might be about to do it. <sighs> Alright, let me just speed through what happened here. Back on Albion, I tried to use my hero to block an enemy army, which failed. Just keep that in mind. I pushed on to the only Shadow Legion settlement, Konkata. I decided to besiege them to try and get them to come out to fight me, which they did. I fought this battle, I did win it, the power of missile came through. But that was during the AI turn, I didn't have a chance to attack, so of course, those Vanna Heimlings that I just tried to block with my hero came and stood next to the settlement that I now needed to take. God fucking damn it! So I had to retreat, but then I decided to try and do the Vanna Heimlings dirty by sailing around to their other settlement, their last settlement, and trying to take that before they could get back over here to defend it, or maybe they try and take the other one I just took anyway, I don't know. Either way, didn't matter because guess what? The Shadow Legion came and stood next to this goddamn settlement so I couldn't take it, just like the Vanna Heimlings did just now. Wonderful fun! I just couldn't seem to get anywhere and I just took the loss on the chin and let Luen die. But I came back later with another army, tried to do the same thing, took out the Vanna Heimlings first settlement, tried to sail around and get the other one, but guess what? Shadow Legion to the rescue. I couldn't get anywhere. Or so I thought until I managed to trick them into leaving then I attacked it but I couldn't win this battle anyway with an auto resolve and guess what? They'd retaken the settlement I just raised anyway so fuck my life. All the while I was still being attacked by the Vanaheimlings and their extra armies I had to fend them off which I did fine and then if that wasn't fun enough some beastmen decided to come after me as well although luckily I was able to fend them off but still it was just getting all a bit tedious. Now at this point I was ready to throw in the towel and just say look I can't do it alright Luen peasant only it just doesn't work very well there's too much coming at you too many wars declared on you early on it's very difficult plus the peasant economy with only peasants you have to go into that massive debuff which takes away all your replenishment takes away a lot of your money not to mention you're not using the strongest asset of your army which is cavalry. I thought the only way this is going to be possible is if I can take more territory so that I can field more peasants without the penalties. So I thought alright one more go. One more attempt at this goddamn campaign, let's see what we can do. So I came at it the same way as I did last time, coming for the green skins first, only this time I made one key change. Instead of just raising the settlement, I took the settlement. I figured as my problem last time was having enough population cap to get the peasants, the more land I could take, the better. Even though I couldn't stand not being able to get the full goddamn province. While I was back rebuilding my army, the Muzalon boys came along and besieged us with two stacks. Luckily though, I was able to get an auto resolve. I don't think I would have been able to win it if I fought it, to be honest. We would have got scared away too easily, so I'll take that Pyrrhic victory. And this of course freed up the route to Langwil to go and take that, so now I had my first province and a little extra this time with Grunt Zint. And then of course the obligatory Shadow Legion War Declaration came along. This time though, I decided to make another key change in that I was just going to ignore Albion, ignore Shadow Legion, ignore Vanna Heimlings, fuck the North, I'll fend off their armies as they come, and I'm just going to try and take more territory in the meantime. Now naturally I thought, oh I'll take out Muzalon, but they came at me and asked for a little peace treaty because they were about to be destroyed by Grom. I thought that maybe this would be a good idea so that I could take on Grom or maybe go after the Barrow Legion and try to get more territory from one of those two. Looked like Grom was pushing out though so he seemed like the good next target. The fort settlement nearby had been raised as well and was free for the taking so I decided to take that because that was just more cap for my peasants. I decided I needed more territory though and wanted to go after Castle Artois even though it meant declaring war on the Barrow Legion but they were at war with Grom, I wasn't, I thought this would make Grom like me a little more so he wouldn't declare war on me anytime soon or at least a little later than he normally would have. 
And then, of course, what happened on the next turn? That's right, you've guessed it. Grom declared war on me. Of course he did. Perfect, just as I planned. And to make sure the fun never starts, he besieged me in this turn as well. So just when it feels like I'm starting to get somewhere, Grom and his war comes along and ruins my life. And I don't think I can win this if I fight it. They got full health orc boys. I've got beaten up infantry. There's not really a chance I'm going to be able to pull that out. So at this point, I'm kind of like, ugh. Do I just admit defeat with this campaign? Because, you know, I've got enough footage to make a video and you can just laugh at how badly it's gone. But I persisted. I kept at it. I just took this loss on the chin. I auto-resolved the loss. Luckily, though, for me, he only decided to sack the settlement instead of raising it. So I didn't have to take quite as much of a back step as I originally thought I was going to. I thought he'd raise it or take it for himself. As I was rebuilding myself, though, he attacked my fort settlement as well. Same thing. He attacked it sacked it didn't raise it though thankfully so it was kind of just a weird predicament where it was kind of okay like i can live with being sacked so i just chilled back for a while raised a new army eventually when i did get a full army and a full stack ready to go the vanna heimlings came back around the corner i tried to set an ambush for them but that failed because they got out of the water on the other side away from my ambush so they were able to attack and avoid my ambush i decided to fight this it wasn't too bad i routed most of their stuff off and I actually realized after this battle that, oh, this is the first time I've actually been attacked by the Vanna Heimlings or Shadow Legion. I've been ignoring them and they've kind of been ignoring me until now. So kind of weird that they haven't come after me this run. Maybe it's because I'm a little stronger with a few more settlements. My strength rank is a little higher. Maybe they're a little more afraid of me. I don't know. But whatever reason, they haven't come over and bothered me too much. Over the turns, Marienberg has been making some plays and they pushed back Grom from Gisero, the settlement that I need to take. So I've got a nice little area coming together, but I would like to get Gisero off Marienberg. I do try to trade settlements with them. I tried to trade the fort, but they didn't want it. Eventually, anyway, though, Grom came and took it back, which worked out nicely for me because now I could take it off him and get that full province with Castle Artois. I decided to fight it though so I didn't lose all my units and would have to recruit a bunch more. It was a very messy battle, I tried to use my missiles as much as possible. Very close battle overall, we took a lot of punishment but we did get the win and gained some more territory. So once again it feels like I'm making progress, I'm making baby steps towards getting a bigger kingdom, more peasants, less debuffs from the peasant economy. But just as soon as I took this I also realized that there was a lot of armies around me. There was Grom with a full war, so two stacks of Grom plus there was two stacks of Barrow Legion nearby. So I took my army out of the settlement just so I could run away if one of these two enemies attacked. And I thought I'd be able to decline the attack because I knew I wouldn't be able to win it if they did come at us like they have here. But unfortunately, I'm not able to decline and I have to fight it or just die. So I do fight it, but I concede defeat before my second army arrives and takes any damage. So I ultimately lose the battle, lose the settlement, but my main army doesn't die at least. So we live to fight another day, but guess what? More Vanna Heimlings on my coast. I've just lost Gisero, my fort then gets besieged by the Barrow Legion. And once again, those feelings of, my god, why am I playing this campaign anymore? Come back in and try to make me stop. But my beard says, nope. Keep going, you bastard. Don't you stop yet. The lady wills it. Vanna Heimlings come ashore. I'm able to fend them off with a Pyrrhic victory, though. I've got the garrison building there, which is definitely saving it. I then end up besieged at Castle Artois. And guess what? The Beastmen now declare war on me as well, because why not make this campaign even worse? I think about coming out to fight them. Their army is a lot of zombies, but they do have a lot of heroes, which might be tough to take down. Plus, they do have some strong units, Crypt Horrors, Black Knights, some Cairn Wraiths. I've also had some upgrades, though. I've recruited some Battle Pilgrims in another smaller army. I can now get those and Grail Reliquaries, so I'm going to start building those in my armies. But for now, I'm going to hope that they besiege me and actually come at me, and I'll fight the siege, and I'll be able to fend them off that way with the help of towers and such. But what a fool I am because they have another stack just over in Gisero, which is going to come over because my battle pilgrims are in force march because I tried to get them involved so I could get the order resolved, but it didn't work. So now they're isolated and of course destroyed. But as I'm making blunders, the Barrow Legion also make a blunder as they attack me, but only with one of their armies, even though the other one is just stood right there. So I decide to fight this and they've broken themselves up into two parts and I try to take out the part that has all the heroes, the tougher part in my opinion. The other part is mostly cavalry zombies and some Kern Wraiths which is still pretty tough but it's the heroes I'm really worried about. Luckily I am able to take out most of that stuff before the stuff on the other side of the settlement arrives. And when it does, I'm pretty much set up and ready to go to take them on. I've got lots of missiles left, I've got my artillery, I've got Luen with the magical attacks to deal with the Kern Wraiths. And I'm able to take myself a heroic victory, beating down one big Barrow Legion army, taking a lucky break there that they didn't come at me with both their armies, and another lucky break with Grom failing his war, so that meant they would be a little more vulnerable for a few turns. I now just needed to make some plays and gain some more territory. It seemed like the Barrow Legion were struggling with their wars with other factions, like the Wood Elves, which helped. But of course, with the vampires, they're able to raise armies very, very quickly. So in the time it takes me to replenish my army, they've built up two and a half stacks. 
They come at me near Castle Artois, but I decide to retreat, which means they then besiege Castle Artois. However, they've once again made the boo-boo that they've left their reinforcement armies out of range, and thus, Kemmler's army is all by its lonesome. I decide to fight the battle as the order resolve is ridiculous. And pretty much all my battles I've been fighting in the same way, play defensively, blast everything with missiles. I get a little bit screwed on the reinforcement army here as they have some cavalry in the way, which means my boys can't really move. But with a good bit of focus firing and missile flanking, that's something I've been doing a lot, trying to get behind the enemy with all my missiles. We take them out with a pretty solid victory. I then proceed to chase that army down and finish it off. And with this on the next turn, Kemmler comes along and asks for peace now. I have the decision, do I keep pressing the attack on the Barrow Legion or do I get peace and maybe go after Grom instead? I decide to go for the peace and to go for Grom because the Barrow Legion seem to have a lot of enemies and thus, with any luck, someone else will mostly take them out. Whereas with Grom, if he stays as he is and gets bigger and gets another war, I'm going to be in trouble again. So I've got to stop Grom before he wars up. I've also got those beastmen still around to worry about, which I decide to deal with over the next few turns once I'm replenished and in a little bit better shape. Luckily, it's not too crazy of an army. We're able to auto-resolve the victory. Again, I've got to chill out, replenish, and then try to take the fight to Grom. Over the next few turns as well, Grom makes some moves. He tries to get after Musalon, I think, but Carcassonne comes along and besieges one of Grom's settlements, so it's all going on down here. Eventually, I'm ready to move. Marienburg has retaken Gisero, who I'm friendly with, so I get military access with them, which allows me to get to Castle Baston and take that off of Grom. It's a Pyrrhic victory, but the results aren't too bad. But there we go. More territory and another baby step forward, finally. With that as well, Carcassonne has taken some stuff off Grom, and Grom is now pretty much confined to Massif Orcal. And I'm pretty much going to leave him alone for now. I'm going to hope that someone else will go and finish him off. Maybe the Wood Elves, they seem to surround him. Now, at this point, I realize my lands are very disjointed, a bit all over the place. I don't really have a nice solid chunk of land. So I decide that Musalon has got to go. They hold the territory that connects all my bits of territory together. So I need their lands. I begin building a second army so that I can try and hit them with a big mass of force quickly and take them out before they even know what's happening. They kind of seem like they see it coming as they did have one of their armies over in this other little settlement, but now they've gathered them all around the one main settlement, which means they probably know what might be coming. On the next turn, I surround them and make my move, declaring war because we're not at war with them yet, so we're going to get that element of surprise. I'm going to besiege them with my smaller army and then try to use my bigger army to take out their two smaller armies that are supporting. I'm going to be able to get rid of one of them, but the other one will survive and support, but not a big deal. It does end up a bit of a faff trying to get them to come out to fight me, but eventually they do, and I'm able to use my missiles to blast them all down. It's mostly a lot of zombies and stuff, so nothing too crazy. There are some stronger units, but good old Luen's in there, able to get the job done. And we finally acquire the settlement of Leonez, something we probably should have done in about the first 10 turns normally, but... Goddamn peasants don't make it easy, huh? I then roll on to their final settlement, able to take this, no problem, and get rid of Musalon once and for all, uniting my territory as one nice big chunk of land now, able to support itself a little better. And it finally felt like I'd done it. I've got this nice chunk of land, I've done peasants only, no cavalry other than in garrisons occasionally, but I wanted to finish this video strong, so I thought maybe I'll come and take out the Barrow Legion. Or then I thought about maybe taking out the Shadow Legion and the Banner Heimlings, because they've kind of expanded over into Ulthwan, which is just a short boat trip away from me. But the Barrow Legion came and made the decision for me as they declared war on me and attacked my fort settlement, which is a battle I decided to fight this time as I auto-resolved it last time. I thought maybe I could do some damage to them, get rid of some of their units so they don't go rampaging around too much in my lands afterwards. So I fought the battle, but my biggest takeaway was after six years of playing this game, how have I never noticed? Ghosts climbing ladders is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen. But there we go, I took out a few of their units, did a little damage. They then proceeded to besiege Castle Artois, but I was able to get a close victory. Taking out some of those units most certainly helped us there. They'd taken Gissero off Marienburg, so I had a little bit of that. And eventually this all led to me besieging their main settlement, Blackstone Post. I besieged it over the turn to try and get them to come out to fight me, and that they did. And thus we had a big old fight on our hands. The final battle to finish off this goddamn peasant-only run. The boys were ready and willing to finish off this damn dirty vampire foe that had plagued us for most of this campaign. We were outnumbered, but a lot of our peasants were quite battle-hardened at this point. They were ranked up, they were stronger, we had some battle pilgrims, we had a lot of missiles. And in terms of how I played the battles in this campaign overall, it was pretty much always the same, so that's why I haven't shown a lot of it, it wasn't terribly exciting. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of playing defensive, holding that front line as much as possible, using the missiles to blast down the stronger units, which in the case of the vampires is usually lightly armored, so that worked out pretty well. 
and always trying to protect my flanks well so that those missiles could keep firing and eventually moving my missiles around so that I could flank behind enemies and shoot them in the back with all the missiles. That was a pretty strong tactic I used a lot. But it's worth noting that this campaign, Peasant Only, kind of got a lot harder with the Bretonian update because of the way that you've now got the Peasant and Knight system with leadership. When a Knight unit is nearby a Peasant unit, it'll give it a buff in leadership. So I didn't really have that in this campaign. Maybe Luen does it. But overall, it was much harder in terms of winning the battles and in terms of auto resolve. I had to fight a lot of these battles. But eventually we got it done as I did in this battle and we pretty much got the Barrow Legion done for. And while it is incredibly tempting to sack them for 20 grand, I don't want to faff around. I just want to get them gone at this point. I do have some nice income as well now that I can afford all my peasants and such. And this campaign wouldn't be complete without a little Vanna Heimlings invasion, so let's just get that out the way, please. There we go, Languil being besieged, but luckily I've kept usually a lord over there, just whenever I see them coming, I put a lord in the settlement just to help out. It usually pushes us into a Pyrrhic victory, I think, so it helps out. We got it done anyway, peasant only, pretty much on the path to victory now. I think at this point, if I were to continue this campaign, I would go over and try to get rid of the Shadow Legion and such on Ulthuan, and then go and clear out Albion of them, just so they're not bothering me anymore. But there we go, peasant only, a nice looking bit of territory that we've gained eventually after four tries. I did debate trying to do this with a different legendary lord because this was just a little bit ridiculous. I think it really exemplifies the anti-player bias problem where you just get declared war on and you're the only focus of all the AI's attention. It's just a little too much in this campaign. The Shadow Legion should probably declare war on you much later in the campaign, so it's just a little less ridiculous. Although I guess if you're using the actual most powerful part of the Bretonian army, the cavalry, it's not so much of an issue. But anyway, there we go. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the patrons who support this channel. I will see you in the future.